Welcome back to the How To Series by Trend Micro. This is Michael Clifford. I'm a support engineer with Trend Micro. Uh, I support products such as Apex One, Apex Central, Office Scan, Control Manager. I can go down the list, but we don't have that much time. So today we're going to talk about best practices in configuring Apex One for malware protection. We're going to do this through the policies in Apex Central since that is the best practice for administrating Apex One now. So if you've gotten used to Office Scan or going through the uh, Apex One console. Um, highly recommend you shift over to Apex Central so you can do policy management and get all the new stuff deployed. But today is just best practices. So we start on the dashboard once you log in. Uh, just go to policies and policy management and we'll create our first best practice policy. So on the drop down for product, make sure you select the Apex One security agent. Click create and name your policy appropriately for whichever domain or set of agents you're going to go. For today, we're going to call this best practice. All right, so this is the best practice for endpoints such as Windows 7, Windows 10, and, and not so much servers. Servers are a different ballgame altogether. We could talk about that in a different video. So I'm going to go ahead and set this for the operating system prevalent in my environment, which is Windows 10. And then anything with Windows 10 will get this best practice policy and adhere to the best practices for malware protection. All right, so we're just going to quickly go through all of these. Uh, we can explain each setting later in a in you know separate videos, so we don't get bogged down. And we're just going to go through what the best practices are for this malware protection uh, that we recommend. So first and foremost, on the additional service settings, you need to have these installed for the services to run, or at least some of our advanced services to run. So the best practice is to have the unauthorized change prevention service running here for the desktops. That's what we're targeting. The firewall service, um, that's optional. It, it obviously is good to have a firewall in your environment, but if you use a separate firewall, then you wouldn't necessarily need this. So completely up to you, but definitely have a firewall on your endpoints. Suspicious connection service should be enabled. Data protection service. Uh, it depends if you're using the, the data protection, DLP, device control, but since it comes with it, might as well enable it so you can control those devices. Advanced protection service, most definitely enable. This is enabled. This is for some of our advanced features like predictive machine learning and uh, different parts of behavior monitoring. So it's, it's definitely a best practice to have that enabled. Now moving downward into the behavior monitoring settings, this comes standard as checked off. However, the best practice is to have that on. So you want to block the processes commonly associated with ransomware, and you also want the anti-exploit protection on. I want to note that you should definitely test this on a few agents in your environment or a myriad of agents in your environment that have different settings so you can verify that it's not going to impact your endpoints and you can assign any types of exclusions you need so you don't lose too much of your functionality while uh, protecting yourself from uh, various malwares. So this isn't so much a best practice, but it is a good practice. Uh, enabling the event monitoring will allow you to assess uh, different types of stuff going on inside of your environment. You could change the action uh, to deny if you'd like, but at least leaving it at assess will let you see what's going on in your environment as it's happening. And you can trace down different types of malware that might be um, trying to enter your environment or uh, attacking an endpoint. Device control settings, we won't get too much into that, uh, like stated earlier. Uh, it just depends on your organizational needs. And we get down to the scan settings. So all of the scan settings have a best practice setting, and we're going to go through them um, since real-time scan has a couple of extras. Uh, the best practice is to leave it on in telescan. Uh, scan hidden folders, uh, obviously, on manual scan. You, you definitely don't want to leave those out. Compressed files, <coughs> OLE objects and the boot area. CPU usage, uh, up to you. Uh, if you go on high, then it will finish, but it might impact your users. Medium is a good in between, and low won't impact users as much. But this is for the manual scan, so they'll be kicking that off themselves. For action, the, the best practice, uh, technically, is to use a specific action for each one, and all of them would be set to quarantine, accept other malware, which is clean, then quarantine. So this is in our guide. This is how it's set up. If you don't want to go through that, then using active action is fine, as long as you check this box and set it to quarantine. This is where you would state where your quarantine files go. We can definitely get into that later. 
damage cleanup services, advanced, and run cleanup. So th this will help you clean up different types of malware and restore it to a, a good condition. Spyware grayware, definitely on clean. And that's it for manual scan. So moving on to predictive machine learning, enable it, quarantine, and terminate. So it's already set that way by default, so you don't even have to touch it. Real-time scan settings, almost the same as the manual scan. There's a couple extra options here. So scan floppy disk during shutdown. If you have the floppy option, sure. Um, not too sure how prevalent that is nowadays. Uh, the other two settings which come default off that is recommended on is scan the boot sector of a USB storage device as well as scan all files and removable storage uh, for very obvious reasons. Another default setting is the enable CVA exploit scanning uh, through the web and email channels. Definitely enable that. When you go over to action, it's the same as it was before. You can either flip it over, change these to quarantine, or just use the active action and check that box so they all go to quarantine. Damage cleanup services, as usual, enable that, and we're good to go. So next setting is the scan now setting. I'm sorry, I, I skipped the scan method. <laughs> Quick one, smart scan, all the time, every time. <laughs> all right, scan now settings. Same type of thing, you just go through, same impact as a manual scan, all the good stuff is here. Come over to action, and we're just gonna use the quarantine action, it's a lot quicker to set up. And then make sure the damage cleanup services is set for advanced and it runs the cleanup. Scheduled scan, yet, yet another one of the same thing. This comes disabled by default. Um, you definitely wanna have a scheduled scan and you want to vary it out across your network, especially if you have a VDI infrastructure or, or a lot of servers or endpoints running on a VMware. You don't wanna bog it down, so make sure they all have separate policies with different times on the schedule. So you wanna enable both on the scheduled scan. Pick a day that's not gonna impact your organization too much and a time that doesn't impact it. So Saturday, every week, 10 o'clock, not much going on in my lab, so it's a perfect time to set it. And then we go through and we do the exact same thing as we did with the other scan settings. Go to action, active action, quarantine, and make sure DCS is set to advanced with the cleanup. So spyware, grayware approved list. We're not whitelisting anything. We don't have any of our software that does this. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that alone. Suspicious connection settings, all check boxes and set to block is the best practice. Now a new addition is the vulnerability protection setting. And it's not technically in a guide yet. However, I, uh, I can almost assure this is gonna be a best practice. Definitely enable vulnerability protection. Um, Performance is fine for most organizations. Uh, this has about 200 CV exploit rules. This has about 400. So if you need to whitelist, you can do that as necessary after you enable it. The one key to note is on the network engine settings. The TCP connections are at a fairly low level. Make sure to up that to whatever your organization needs. Maybe you want to talk to your network guys and see how many TCP and UDP, uh, UDP connections are made on a daily. Change that so you don't get a bit of a log flood because they're reaching that, that maximum TCP connection limit. And then web reputation settings, both internal and external should be on, and you definitely wanna have the external on medium or even high, while the internal you can take a more lax posture and go low or medium. So I would suggest medium just so those highly suspicious sites get caught instead of just the dangerous sites. So the, the sites that we haven't tested, this isn't really uh, best practice. Um, however, if you just want to trust that we are scanning sites and then whatever sites are submitted to us, enable this and that way you can verify that they're safe. And I think that's it, we're ready to deploy. So we got all of our stuff, we have the best practice policy set up, everything's here that we want. And uh, once you got it filtered, we got it for Windows 10, you click deploy, and now the agents that are targeted by this policy have the best configuration for malware protection according to our best practices. Till next time, I'm Michael Clifford with Trend Micro. Have a good day. Bye.